وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a new episode of The Prophet's Prayer sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illustrating exactly how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray according to the sound sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam With us today is Dr. Yasser al-Fiqi, the Assistant Professor of the Islamic Studies at Al-Azhar University. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum wa assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Yasser is going to uh, help us to show exactly how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to pray. But before that, uh, there is a very important notice that uh, many of us, of those who are following different schools of thoughts, might find some differences. Uh, we should keep in mind that all the founders of schools of thoughts, whether Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi'iyya, Malik, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, all of them uh, were just trying to follow exactly the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to the point that uh, some of them said, إِذَا صَحَّ الْحَدِيثُ فَهُوَ مَذْهَبِي If the hadith is proven to be sound, then it is my madhab. Even if my madhab is different than that. Accordingly, we will try as much as we can, inshaAllah, to demonstrate the prayer of the Prophet وسلم, according to the sound Sunnah. So please, Dr. Yasser, proceed by uh, initiating a form of a prayer. Uh, I see Dr. Yasser is uh, getting hold of a prayer rug. Of course, we have to keep in mind that a prayer rug is not mandatory nor necessary for the Salah. The Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith that, جُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا uh, the entire earth has been made for Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and his ummah as a place of prostration, a place of prayer, and a place of purity too. But if a person would like to pray on a particular thing which is comfortable and clean, it's okay. As long as, as we've seen that this prayer rug does not have any designs nor decorations, uh, a person should keep away from any factors of distraction while praying so that he would gain the maximum khushua in the salah. Facing the qibla is a must, whether the prayer is a fard or a voluntary prayer. Uh, now we see the sheikh is standing with the shoes on. That's another issue. That the Prophet ﷺ used to pray sometimes with the shoes on and sometimes he took them off. As long as the shoes are clean, it's perfectly fine. Uh, people sometimes upon entering their houses, they take their shoes off. So of course, if the masajid are sprayed with rugs and carpets and clean, it would be better if you take your shoes off before entering the masajid and so on. But as far as praying with the shoes on, it is permissible in our religion. As a matter of fact, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, once said that, do otherwise different than the people of the book, pray in your shoes, because they do not pray in their shoes. So now, the Sheikh is facing the Qibla, and he's made sure that his clothes are clean, he has a proper tahara, and the spot which he's going to offer the salah at is clean as well. The very first rukn of the prayer, and any act of worship, of course, is the intention. The Prophet ﷺ says, Indeed, deeds are but by their intentions. The intention in Islam is not to be uttered nor pronounced by the tongue, so that the person would keep the intention between him and Allah the Almighty, and would assume now he's making an intention of offering any particular prayer. But before all, there is a very important thing which is worthy of mentioning. The sutra, the Prophet ﷺ emphasized on the importance of taking a screen while praying so that it would keep people away from you and it would not let them cross 
in front of you while praying. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if any of you is going to pray, let him take a screen. That screen or that sutra could be anything <coughs> obvious and seen to prevent people from crossing before you. If you can't find anything, you may draw a line, as in one hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said so. He once put his stick, his spear, or you draw a line. And the Prophet Sallallahu would draw close to a wall or a fence and would keep a distance of three yards from the standing position to the sutra or to the wall so that would not let anybody cross before him. What if somebody is still trying to cross before you? You should resist him and prevent him from crossing before you. There is a serious warning for crossing before a person who is praying. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in one hadith, if the person who is passing before the musalli would to know as what kind of sin he is committing and how bad is it, it would be better for him and easier to keep standing for 40. The narrator was not sure whether it's 40 days, 40 months, or 40 years. So that a person could, should make sure, especially if he is uh, walking in the masjid, that he should not cross before any musalli. That diverts the attention of the person who is praying. Now the sheikh is going to begin by making the very first activity of the salah, which is takbirul ihram, or takbiratul ihram. Allahu Akbar. We notice that the Shaykh raised his hands parallel to his ears. This is one position. There is another position where that the person may raise his hands parallel to his shoulders, and both were approved by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahu Akbar. Of course, once you say Allahu Akbar, takbiratul ihram, now we are in a sacred condition. You are in the salah. You're communicating and dialoguing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> so your eyesight should be focused on one spot, which is the position of the prostration. And you should not look around or anywhere else. Those who look up, down, right or left, they void their prayer and they lose their khushu' by doing so. Aisha, the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her, narrated that whenever the Prophet ﷺ would pray, his eyesight would not depart the position of his sujood. We also notice that the Shaykh is standing in a position facing the Qibla by his entire body, even his toes facing the Qibla. Now, uh, placing the hands in their position, we see that the Shaykh is placing the right hand on the left hand on his chest. The Prophet ﷺ used to do so, as in the hadith of Wa'il ibn Hujr, that he observed the Prophet ﷺ in his prayer, and he was putting the right hand on the left hand on his chest. He said ﷺ in one hadith, we are the prophets, we are commanded to put the right on the left. Uh, you may actually grab your wrist with the little finger and the thumb, and that's one position, or you just place the right hand on the left one, on your chest. Now, before doing anything and reciting any recitation, the person would like to begin his prayer with a beautiful supplication. The supplication is known as Dua ul Istiftah, the beginning supplication. It is uh, the tradition of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ to recite certain supplications as we would hear <coughs> the Shaykh reciting so. الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والأرض حنيفا وما أنا من المشركين إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا من المسلمين. Beautiful supplications were prescribed by Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, and there is many more, such as اللهم بعد بيني وبين ذنوبي كما بعدت بين المشرق والمغرب. اللهم نقني من خطاياي كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس. اللهم اغسلني من خطاياي بالثلج والماء والبرد. The Musalli may recite any of them 
and if he or she is memorized all of them, that would be excellent to recite them before beginning the actual recitation of the Salah. Now, after the beginning supplication, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Quran that prior to the Quranic recitation that one should seek refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So that's why in the beginning of the prayer, the musalli would recite al-isti'adha in different forms as the shaykh is going to recite. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Or he may say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ مِنْ هَمْزِهِ وَنَفْخِهِ وَنَفَثِهِ Well, this recitation of al-isti'adha or seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be only in the beginning of the prayer in the very first rak'ah and that's it. So that we would not have to repeat it again before each recitation. And now we're beginning with one of the pillars of the salah which is reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if one does not recite Surah Al-Fatiha in his Salah, his Salah is invalid. فَهِيَ خِدَاج فَهِيَ خِدَاج فَهِيَ خِدَاج It is defected. And he would begin by reciting Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in himself secretly. That was the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. ما شاء الله. It is prescribed for the imam and for the follower as well. Whether you're praying by yourself or in congregation, after reciting سورة الفاتحة each time to say آمين. I would like to alert the viewers to a very important thing. The beginning supplication is to be recited secretly, as well as seek and refuge with Allah, al-isti'adha, as well as Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Whether you pray in your, uh, by yourself uh, as single or leading the prayer as an imam. Ameen is a very good practice that if your ameen coincide with the ameen of the angels, all your sins will be forgiven. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in one hadith, that indicates it's not only you who's praying and not only you who are saying Ameen, but the angels too are listening to your recitation and they too say Ameen. Inshallah, we'll continue next time, so please stay tuned. I'll leave you in the protection of Allah. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.